think of Fisga? Yeah, mate, you know what? This year has been some of the best football I've seen Neville play. Absolutely. And, and I'm shattered as a salary cap's doing its job, but, like, he's squeezed out and he's going to Newcastle. Yeah. For Newcastle, look, I tell you, you've got a great, great guy there player. on and off the field, and he's done all the right things since, uh, you know, he's been to two or three different clubs now, and, uh, mate, he's a great guy and good Mackay lad. Well, that's the top, but then there's the middle, of course. Those teams trying to get into the top eight, and I guess a team that's precarious in that situation at the moment is the Newcastle Knights. But their last few weeks of football has certainly been encouraging, Wiz. Do you think that this could be a smoky team for the top eight when you consider that many people were touting them for the wooden spoon at the well, season start? Well, you know, I, I thought they always had the capabilities and good quality players in their side. I think they just had to believe in themselves and in the coaching style of Rick Stone. He's very direct. He doesn't mix his words. He doesn't go around the, the corners. He goes straight at, at you. To me, though, the Newcastle side, Uate, is playing some fantastic oh, yeah, football. And, and the Jared Mad Mullen, Dog. too. If Jared, Jared Mullen was Jared playing Mullen, that sort of football before yeah. he Origins, be in, he would have given the selectors some headaches. In the mix, mate. Yeah. He would have been in the mix for sure. The mix, but congratulations to the, to the to uh, Newcastle yeah. Knights because you yeah. mentioned it. Look, at the start of the season, everyone was talking about them being the wooden spoon favourites and how they couldn't compete after the drama and the issues that they had in the off-season. But, you know, only a couple of weeks ago, they got that massive towel up by the Canberra Raiders and everyone was predicting gloom and doom. But they just showed me that they've got a strong culture in place up there. Mm. And I think Rick Stone's to be congratulated yeah. as well because yeah. the way he's been able to get his team and get them playing back to a standard which is acceptable mm. for the Newcastle supporters because they've obviously set themselves some standards and you know they've always been um, strong on mateship and, 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 and lining up together and shoulder to shoulder and not letting one another down. I've seen evidence of that over the last mm. couple of weeks, but they need to do it again this weekend when they take on the Warriors. But they're capable of winning, and, and who knows what happens this week. If they get on a bit of a roll, they're probably capable of making the finals if their best players are available. Yeah. Now, a couple of retirements we need to make mention of for this week. Firstly, a really big one in veteran from Newcastle, Steve Simpson. He's decided oh. to call it a day. 216 games over 12 seasons for the Knights, 13 origin appearances, seven tests. He is really one of the hard men of the game, and, and it's sad to see him go. Yeah, mate, sometimes, you know, uh, you don't you don't want to go, but you've got to go, and unfortunately for him, one of the nicest blokes you'll play against, and real tough, like Tony Butterfield, Paul Harrigan, in that mould of player, an absolute gentleman, so mm. congratulations to him and his family. You've you've been wonderful for the game, on and off the field. Yeah, yeah. one thing I'd like to say about him is, he was probably one of the, the blokes that I would love to have played football with, because he was so tough, and when you talk about State of Origin, and you go through the, the times when he was selected, he'd be nearly the first one you select, because you just needed that tough bloke down the middle of the ruck who didn't waver either way back. So I, I really enjoyed his career. I loved every every minute of it. We're joined now by Matty Johns and Matty Broncos boss Bruno Cullen's not happy with rival clubs, wondering how Greg Inglis fits under Brisbane salary cap. In fact, he's called them gutless, faceless cowards. What are your thoughts? Well, well, Bruno came out last month saying that the Broncos weren't in a position to offer Greg Inglis their market or his market worth due to their salary cap restraints. Yet they've come out and they've signed him. And, and on top of that, a lot of the CEOs felt like they haven't had a fair crack at Inglis themselves. So I can understand there have been a few eyebrows raised, to be honest. Are you happy to see him at Brisbane? Happy to see him stay in the game. I'd rather see him at Newcastle. <laughs> well, speaking of Newcastle, you play a lot of football with Mad Dog McDougal. Have a look at this, Matthew. Uh, here he is running in a try, looking terrific, takes the ball over the line. It's about here where I get concerned. Uh, about when did he start wearing his brain on the outside of his head? Uh, as I've always said, if Mad Dog was a wine, he'd be a cheap Moselle. The older it gets, the worse it looks. Like cracking the world's biggest walnut. Matthew Johns, as always, thank you so much. Thanks, Tone. Stuff you may have missed, police in the Newcastle area, very serious story, are still searching for the hoon who left the tyre marks on the back of Adam McDougall's melon. Here you go, scores the try. Oh, my goodness! Look at that. I mean, what, what is that? I know we have embarrassing medical stories on Channel 9 late at night, but there's something going on there that needs to be looked at. Fair dinkum. Look, players are rubbing their fingers through it. That's disgusting. Now, this week, we pay tribute to a terrific player from the past decade in the NRL, and that's Newcastle's Steve Simpson, who sadly, because of a knee injury, was forced to announce his retirement on uh, Tuesday. Won't get back onto the field. 216 first-grade games, 13 origin, seven test matches. And, of course, at uh, Tuesday, the obligatory question when a player retires, what has been his career highlight? Oh, there is, mate. There's so many great memories. It's, it's pretty hard to signal out a few, but, um, yeah, no. I think sort of probably every day, too, coming to the training, it's always... Uh, 
it's a great thing and um, and something I look forward to. So um, probably one of the biggest things I'm going to miss. Yeah, terrific player, Stu Simpson. Well done. I saw Joey will have something to say about uh, Steve a little later in the show. And then on Sunday afternoon, the Warriors are at home to the Knights. Yeah. This is a danger game for the Warriors, who, who yeah. look like they're going to do something in the semi-finals, and the Knights have been in good form, as discussed, Joey. Yeah, no Jared Mullen for the Knights, which will hurt them, but Kirk Gidley's in the halves. He'll uh, he'll lead the, to the team there, but the Knights are playing in tremendous spirit. Yeah. And I wouldn't mm. be surprised they go over there and knock them off, but you know, the Warriors have got that big, aggressive forward pack. But it, as you said, it's a very it's a danger game for the Warriors. But wouldn't be surprised if the Knights knock them off. Given Simo's retired this week, obviously that'll be a bit of a motivation. Oh, for sure. You know, he's he's held in high regard at the Knights. You know, one of the toughest players mm. ever to play for the club, probably the toughest. Um, it's just sad to see him go out not on his terms, but he'll be remembered and respected always for what he's done. And yeah, I'm sure they'll lift for Simo yeah. for sure. Yeah, he's had a great career, Steve Simpson, and uh, congratulations to <laughs> yeah. you, Steve, yeah. on, on a great tackle. career. <laughs> in September, you have to win in August. The Knights are doing that, but every game is like a final. Lose it, and that's the end of the season. For the Knights, a lot rides on the shoulders of Kurt Gidley. If the Warriors let him run, the Knights will prosper. The Warriors are holding eighth spot. Win and pile on the pressure on the Rabbitohs. Lose, and the Bunnies will know they can take the spot when they go out to face the Storm. This is pressure time. If the Warriors can handle it, the playoffs will be within their grasp. It's family day out here at Mount Smart Stadium and fans and mums and dads and kids alike having a good old time and there's nothing like having Cookie Bear around as well. But it is week 23 of the Telstra Premiership and it is the Warriors at home tonight. Stephen McIver, Daryl Chook, Halligan in for game day. What a game this one promises to be with results overnight and what's happened so far this weekend. All the pressure goes on the Warriors who sit in eight. But when you see Parramatta win and Canberra win, you've got to stay on your game. Stephen, intriguing match this one for sure. The Knights, well, their season is on the line. And for the Warriors, I think today decides whether the Warriors make the eight or not. Oh, big call. Big call early. All right, well, one man they've got to stop is Kurt Gidley. And this man spoke to Kurt about their, their last couple of weeks and how well they're doing. Well, Kurt, um, I guess something small about uh, at the moment after a pretty long year. Yeah, that's been a long year, mate. A um, couple of wins the last two weeks, which has been good. And two two good wins. Um, you know, one, one good one against me on a tough Monday night, and uh, a nice nice sunny home home day uh, against the Bulldogs. Shifted to the halves recently. Enjoying that? Yeah, it's been good, mate. Um, through injury with Ben Rogers being out, um, certainly thought it was it was best for the team that I play in the halves with Muller, which has been good the last couple of weeks. We've been getting the result there. Um, probably still something I'm, I'm warming to and, and trying to work work through um, as best I can. But um, I think it's been good for the team the past two weeks. Is there a couple more levels for this Newcastle team to climb? Yeah, definitely. I think you know defensively, the, our game on the weekend against the Dogs was was as strong as it's been. Um, even against the, the form team of, of Manly the week before, we we held them to I think 12 or 14 points. Um, so I think that's the that's the backbone of, of any good team is is you know defending their line. Trips across the Tasman are always pretty tough. Um, Tough gigs. How are you going to approach this one, playing the Warriors? Yeah, I think um, it's about sort of just getting there with a good mentality and get in and, and get out with um, with a strong strong attitude as a team. And, and defensively, again, I think this is where we've got to sort of win the game. It's always a, a tough game over there, and they're always a big and physical team. Um, but I think defensively is, is where, you, where you win the game over there. Going to kick the ball to Manu this week? <laughs> I think I'll try and keep it away from him, actually. <laughs> Just uh, try and keep him off a little three-metre um, run-up is, is about as much as we want, to, want him winding up at. <laughs> 
it is the battle we are looking forward to, but it's Scotty Duro who comes in for Jared Mullins, a partner, Kurt Kitty in the heart, and I wonder how that will affect the way they, they move this team around. Oh, I think it'll be significant today. Uh, Jared Mullins has been fantastic in their last two wins for Newcastle. He's been outstanding, so Scotty Duro comes in today um, to feed the backs. Uh, one thing Scotty Duro does, he has a pretty accomplished kicking game. His fine kicking game is probably a little bit better than Jared Mullins. Uh, for me, Gidley at half is the key to this side, and he particularly likes running to the right-hand side, and when he scoots out of dummy half, if he picks up Junior Sal or Mad Dog McDougall out in the centres, yeah. there could be some trouble. One of those critical wins, and there's the head-to-head -head bit between the two sides, and it's uh, the Warriors versus the Knights, but here's the interesting thing about Sunday football. The Knights have only won two of their last 11 Sunday games away from home. You like that one? Oh, look, that last game that we just saw there with the Knights and the Warriors earlier this season, I think it was a game that really was the catalyst to the Warriors getting their season on track. It was a seesaw in that went deep into the second half, and the Warriors prevailed. There's some similarities there today. Moon played well. He plays again today. Juro played for Newcastle. He plays again today. So while it was a, you know, a long time ago, it was actually the game that got the Warriors started. But the one thing the Knights do bring into this game today is a very good form. The Knights are riding something of a high of late. They did stumble up in Townsville back in round 20. However, the narrow 28-24 loss was a sign that Newcastle's attacking prowess was very much alive. A week later, Manly copped the brunt of a Knights side that after a mixed season, finally clicked as a unit. With Adam McDougall and Aquila Uate chasing the club's overall try scoring record and season record respectively, the 32-14 thrashing of the Seagulls had shades of internal rivalry. Both McDougal and Uwate deny any rift, and even if there was one, they kissed and made up when Uwate gifted this forward pointer to the Mad Dog in last weekend's 30-6 win over Canterbury. It's fair to say the Knights are well armed with determined attacking weapons the Warriors will need to contain. No, Jared Mullen, but they do have the mad dog, McDougal, who wants to prove to his coach, Rick Stone, who I spoke to earlier this week, says, well, he's doing enough to possibly re-sign for another year. But let's talk about the pack. Zeb Tyre and co. Ben Cross, there's a killer the thrill up against Manu today. But their, their pack is the one that really has to contend to get the, ball, they, they get the ball out there. For sure. Will they do enough damage up through the middle of the Warriors pack to give the likes of McDougal and Junior South some room to move? I mean, Kafusi came to the Knights mid-season, would you believe yeah. so? Ben Cross, he's got plenty of firepower. It's their back row, which is creative for mine. They're real workers. Um, I like the look on the bench of Zeb Tyre as well and the Kiwis. Um, yeah, look, I've got a question mark on the Newcastle pack. They'll really want to stand up today. All right, well, let's confirm the lineup under coach Rick Stone. This is the Newcastle side for week 23. At the back, of course, will be Shannon McDowell. On the wings, Cooper Vuna and you are, say, the killer. In the centres, Junior Sal and the Mad Dog, Adam McDougall. The half pairing to lead the side around. 19 is Scott Duro and Kurt Gidley, the captain, will play at halfback. The back row, Hilda, Geraldo and Tyre. Up front where the big boffers live, Cross, Kafusi and De Goyce in the middle. On the bench, plenty of spark. Tola, Nagama, Safua and Richard Faso. They are coached by Rick Stone. Rick, two good wins in a row. The confidence is there. You're going to need it today against the Warriors. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's a tough trip over here and there's no doubt we've got a few challenges in front of us. But um, after two wins, we've got some confidence and we're looking forward to it. What's changed in attitude since that flogging by the Raiders a few weeks ago? Because this is a different night side. Yeah, in the last couple of weeks it definitely has been. Uh, probably didn't get much credit for our uh, golden point loss against... Uh, um, the Cowboys in the last two weeks obviously been really good. We've started well and we've controlled the ball better, particularly in our own end, and that's really helped us. No Jared Mullen today. It's an understatement to say that you will miss him in this match. Yeah, we will. Mullen's been great in the last few weeks. His kicking game and also his running game has really come to an effect in the last few weeks, so we're going to miss that. But Scotty Duro, great kicker with a footy, good organiser, and he can definitely help us out in these conditions. Stone, he certainly is one of the nicest blokes running around, but he, he knows he's up against the Warriors side so that will have drawn huge confidence, despite what people think about that Cronulla win, because they tipped out the Roosters last night. Oh, for sure. I mean, Rick Stone is one of the nicest guys running around in Newcastle, and the pressure's come off in the last couple of weeks because Newcastle is still in this competition, whereas two weeks ago, before their two wins, they were out of the competition. Yeah. There is so much to look forward to, but uh, let me just remind you that there is a still a coin toss to be done. Let's go downstairs to Lavina, the two skippers, Kurt Gidley and Simon Mannering, and let's see how this one works.
works out who's going to run which way. Well, it looks like he wants to run right to left. Kurt Gidley, let's see what both think about what is about to ensue in week 23. Hey, Kurt. You've had some great wins against the Dogs and also Manly, but you need momentum against the Warriors this afternoon. Yeah, I think we're in a similar situation as the Warriors where it's sort of a must-win game for probably from, from now on in. Uh, we've had a couple of good wins, but we need to keep going. How good are your wingers at the moment? I mean, last week, four line breaks between them, 300 metres. Hard to believe for a couple of flankers. Yeah, the big men, that's for sure. They're over 100, 100 kilos each, and they both can, can run really, you know, run like as, as good as anyone, I suppose. So they're a big part of our team, um, and they will be today, hopefully, again. The Knights have conceded 22 tries up the middle. That's where you'll have to tighten up today. Yeah, you're good on your stats. <laughs> um, yeah, it's certainly the last couple of weeks has been good. Um, for us, our, our goal line defence has probably been one of our strengths the last two weeks, and, and we've got to keep that up. Teaming up with Scotty Duro, who's no stranger to number six? No, he isn't. He's um, he's had a few few weeks out with, with me and Jared being in the halves, um, but he's, he's certainly keen to play today, and uh, he brings a good kicking game, and he's, he's a good control player as having him in the half. We look forward to the clash. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Kirk Gilly's not going to put one past our very own train spotter when it comes to stats and Levina good, but it certainly does promise to be a special game here. Just quickly, what wins it for you today by either side? Oh, I think the hook is in control around the thing. Degoyce for Newcastle and also Hiramaya um, for the Warriors. Their little interactions from and taking the, the ruck speed, dominating that area. We'll see both teams play good football. All right, folks, get set for a big one at Mount Smart Stadium in week 23 of the Telstra Premiership. It is the Warriors up against the Knights. A win for either could keep the alive and keep them well alive but there's one battle to look forward to you know it. it's the Tongan terror against the Fijian flyer what a thriller here from the Newcastle captain Kurt Gidley he's standing by with Levina Good. Kurt the conditions in the crowd were never in your favour today was the Warriors day. Yeah it was I mean there's two desperate sides looking for a win and trying to hold on to that that hope of making the eight and um, you know they, they defended really well today. The opportunities were definitely there for the Knights maybe some of that kicking lacked attacking there. Yeah, we did. We had our chances down the end, but as I say, the, the goal line defence was was pretty pretty well. And if they keep that up, they'll they'll go well. It's a question I hate to ask, but with that uh, finals flame, is it still tinkering? Yeah, I mean it's always flickering for, for myself because we've still got three games left, and I'm going to do everything I can to try and make that eight. So still three games to go and put everything into them. And looking ahead to Friday night's game next week against the Broncos, it's another tough one. It is. It is. It's, it's again do or die for both teams, and each team definitely needs to win. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, happy days for the Warriors in their penultimate home game. Getting the points against Newcastle, 22 points to 10. Stay with us. More from Mount Smart right after this. have taken a giant stride towards the finals with a crucial win over Newcastle this afternoon. Two tries to Manu Vatuvai had the Warriors up 10-4 at half time before Dan Tola tied it up for the Knights. The comeback though was short-lived. Vatuvai getting the Warriors home with his third try of the afternoon. Vatuvai, yes! 
Yes, yes. He claims a hat trick. The Knights were filthy when a late try was denied for forward pass. A wicked bounce, sealing the result. 22 to 10 it was to the Warriors. Show everyone, and Webby, it's time for the My Hometown competition. It certainly is, and this week we're going to Taree, where Scott Duro and Jared Mullen of the Newcastle Knights, uh, where they reside from, and uh, we're about to find out they're just a couple of old country boys. Let's have a look. Oh, Jared, I think I've got a bite. Oh, really? Welcome to our little piece of paradise. Our hometown, Taree. There's nothing better than a lazy day beside the mighty Minning River, which hides a local secret. Three and a half million oysters get harvested every year from the Manning River. And someone's got to eat them. I love these Kilpatrick ones. Mate, natural's the way to go. You can try it with a bit of chilli. Dude, that's good. Mm. Mate, that's a big oyster. That, that's not a big oyster. That's a big oyster. I brought the sauce. <laughs> Tari's been here since 1831, and we've got the beautiful old buildings to prove it. And this is one of our favourites, St Paul's Presbyterian. And if the ocean's more your gun, we've got some of the most unspoiled beaches in Australia. And they stretch for miles and miles. With all the charm of a small country town, and they also make a great cup of coffee. Mate, this is the life. How's that fishing going, mate? Oh, mate, you think I've got a bite? Mate, stop pulling me leg. That's our hometown, Tari. Look at Bath. Look at good boys. They're doing their push-ups, dips, chins. We are going to take a break, and on the other side of this, we're going to have a look at the game from Newcastle up against the Brisbane Broncos. And Mullen with it. He's playing with a fractured rib. Kidney goes to McDonald. Then to McDougall. He's the record. More tries than any other player in the club's history. The Mad Dog goes over. You're watching Super Saturday. Action from Energy Australia Stadium as the Newcastle Knights take on the Brisbane Broncos. They got off to a good start. Andrew McCulloch, that's his favourite play. The little dummy from acting half, scoring the try. Look, here he is again. The, the show and go from dummy half and links up with Josh Hoffman. They got off to a good start, the Brisbane Broncos, 12.6. But that was it. They were done and dusted there because they just went into overdrive, the Newcastle Knights. This was a terrific try. Goes through a number of sets of hands. Jared Mullen senses the play is on out wide. The nice little quick kick there for Cooper Verna. But stand by, Cooper Verna is not done yet. Akuyu Arte will get involved in this one. Look at that man, Mad Dog McDougal. He was in everything out on that side of the field there last night. Uarte making sure they had a 24 points to 12 lead. I mentioned Cooper Verner, right? That's two. Stand by, he's about to get three. Little kick over the top here. Little kick, that was actually a clever banana kick. We'll have a look at that again in a moment. It was a tremendous effort from Jared Mullen, not just with his kicking game, but also his passing game there last night. Izzy Folau was quiet, but this was just a moment of brilliance we had to highlight because with ball in hand, 40 metres out, it's just so pretty to watch, isn't it? And let's be honest, we've only got a few more rounds to probably see him if the Brisbane Broncos don't make the finals, of course, before he goes to AFL. Isaac Degoyce putting the icing on the cake. There's a fair stack of icing as well. 44 points to 18, if you don't mind. Newcastle Knights, where has that performance been? It was a record-breaking evening for the Knights. Uh, their outside backs, in particular, Cooper Verner, became the fourth Newcastle player in history to score four tries in one match, joining Darren Albert, Andrew Johns and Adam McDougall. Akuyuate broke Tamanatahu's record for most tries in a season for the Knights, while the Mad Dog became the leading try scorer in Newcastle history. So uh, a big night for a lot of their uh, stars on show there last night. But Cooper Verna, four tries. Uh, 
a tremendous effort in anyone's language. And, and as we highlighted with the list there, joined some great names. He was devastating. Normally we're used to seeing a Kuyuate, but Cooper Werner has really resurrected himself in the back half of this season. It's easy to say that he was in the right place at the right time, but he had a bit of work to do on each of these. His handling was, was fantastic. He, um, his strength in traffic on a couple of occasions was great as well. And the combination between the halves and, and both flankers, both wingers in this match was superb. They were looking to uh, get the ball, obviously, as quickly as they possibly could out wide. They believed, uh, looking at the way they played the game, mm. that they had at Newcastle had an advantage out wide, and they exploited that fully, particularly the Brisbane defence defence switched off on the last tackle. They were they were, and I think this is where a lot of clubs can really exploit the opposition. But a lot of clubs are too conservative to actually just try and uh, move the ball on the last tackle and, mm. and take advantage of the wingers and and the outside backs dropping off. Newcastle uh, fully exploited that, and so I think they scored four tries on on the last tackle. Wiz, if State of Origin one was next week, would Jared Mullen be your five eight? Uh, oh, I'm not too sure. I think Todd Carney would probably be my 5'8". He's had a great month him. of football, he, he though, Jared Mullen. He, he didn't play last week, but he came back from the side in yesterday's game. And the vision that he showed, again, and I want to touch on what Junior just said, to put those kicks in, and that, that's part of the game, and had the vision to see that it was on, but to be pinpoint with the kick, or even here we can see with the pass. That's what excites me about Jared Mullen now. The Jared Mullen's always had this, and I think, Junior, you touched on it a, a, about three or four weeks ago. Believe in yourself, run the footy, you put the defence under more and more pressure every time you do that, and he, his game will grow. And I think he's come to a stage now, I think Rick Stone must have sat down and said, mate, we need you to run the ball. We need to start winning games of football. You need to be a leader in the side. And as side. you guys have highlighted, it's, it's confidence. Oh, when he's playing confident. a confident game of football, there's not too many better. Purely and simply confidence, yeah. And, and what him and Kurt Goodley have got now is a, a much improved understanding of, of each other's roles. Uh, Jared Mullen, whilst he's doing a bit more running, he's still controlling the play. He's still reading the play. And that allows Kurt Goodley to do what he does best, and that is run and challenge and support. Mm. I think that his outside men have hit some form. Obviously... All year he's thrown that real long spiral pass and he gets them into space, but they just hadn't had the ability uh, to be guys. But uh, McDougal, Ayuata and Cooper Vuna, mm. four tries. Those guys have really stepped up to the mark mm. and they're playing some pretty good football. Yeah, Gordon, do you think that with Rick Stone coaching after Bryce Smith and, and he come into the side, he, he, do you think they actually believe what they were doing at the start of the season? Because in the last probably three or four weeks, it looks like a different football side. There's a lot more maturity from the side rather than the start of the season. Well, they haven't really had a great combination in the half. No. So now that Gidley's moved, uh, moved in there, I think that they look more, more at home. They've got a lot more direction. And you thought that, you know, Wallace, who was an origin player, I thought that he might have given the Broncos a little bit more direction. But they're missing Darren Lockyer. Yeah. Um, and their young guys just don't look as... Um, as confident, but the Newcastle, it's their best performance because they look like that. They go out there with a lot more belief. Um, and that comes from the coaching staff, you know, yeah. preparing your players without overcomplicating it so they can go out there and uh, win a football game. I, I thought it was a good all round performance. I thought the forwards played well, but, but they, that, and that created space for, the, for their backs, particularly the outside backs. And uh, Adam McDougal, who we, we've talked about the last few weeks, his involvement's been, um, been quite. R remarkable in terms of the, the when, when Newcastle have won, and once again he was heavily involved. But he's also been a, he's been a pioneer for for many many a, a year now. Dukes looking for the little bit extra, and there was an interesting little yeah, well, what, insight what? off the field. He's got where some vision of it, Junior. What's he happening? He was uh, well. He's he's just looking to to loosen himself up and and uh, get the That's cells fun, in the body all it? pumped up and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> well, Dukes, Dukes is actually, uh, and I'm not sure whether that's one of the machines that uh, he's, he's involved with. As, uh, he's got an exercise uh, company, sells exercise machines, uh, and he's, he's always looking for, for the edge. And at his age, you've got to be try, trying to, to stay ahead of the curve, so to speak, and I haven't actually spoken to him about that particular uh, instrument there. I think it's a sort of uh, about, a bit about weight loss as well, but I don't think that was what that, that was, no, what that that was for. That makes you feel good because one of those yeah. in the South change rooms, and I like standing on it, it doesn't work for the weight loss. <laughs> <laughs> what we should get that stuff in here. <laughs> All right, okay. let's grab Try. some reaction with the Knights uh, and their win over the Broncos. Gary Belcher was in Newcastle for Super Saturday. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Well, the, uh, the game was in the balance until uh, about the 25th minute mark, and then the Knights proceeded to play razzle-dazzle football that we haven't seen for a long time. Kurt, it was, uh, it was pretty amazing how, 
how many fifth tackle tries you guys scored just throwing the ball around and kicking? Yeah, I mean, I've certainly been on the on the wrong end of plenty of those in my time, so it is nice to um, to get uh, a couple of fifth tackle tries. They certainly um, you know hurt a team when you when you do get that result. It's fair to say the team was playing like you had nothing to lose, like you know. You, you, well, I think everyone thought you were out of the finals race until after the, the result tonight, but it seemed to me like you guys were just throwing the ball around willy-nilly. Yeah, I mean, there's still plenty to lose. I mean, there's still plenty of pride in, in each um, each guy on this team, and, and you win, you play to, to win every game, and that certainly goes for me and the way I play. And um, I'm not sure how it works out with semis, but I, I just um, concentrate on each week and, and hopefully you play hard enough to get a win. Well, Cooper, what can you say? Any time you score four tries, I guess it's a, a pretty special night. It is a special night, and especially to be with, um, be at a part of this team. And you know, the jersey just means heaps. We won, won it last year with the, with the jersey, and I guess I think it's a good luck, and it's just <coughs> real good, and love it. You had that one try at halftime. You, you didn't see a lot of ball your side of the field in the first half. It didn't seem to be coming your way, but then it all it all kind of fell in place for you. Oh, not really. I guess we had to go, like our left edge had to go in and get dirty and then try to get the ball more, but I guess it kept getting shifted over because Molo kept going that way, but I guess just had to wait and, and finish off the tries with what the forwards have done, so it's pretty good. Free and easy tonight. Was that the uh, the focus? You're just ha happy to have a go and see what happened, or was it... Uh you know, it was a bit more control than it looked. Yeah, no, it was an accumulation of probably a whole season of hard work. You know, obviously um, we've been trying to play an expansive game of footy and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And just tonight we have won the Knights where everything we did uh, worked. There's a good feeling in the Knights camp at the moment, it seems, Dukes. Yeah, look, um, you know, we all get along really well and, um, you know, it's a great place to play footy. Newcastle, everyone's pretty, um, you know, relaxed and enjoys their footy up here. So, um, you know, we'll wait and see. Hopefully we can make the semis and it'll sort of put a bit of a bounce in everyone's step. Nights no, razzle dazzle football. It was. Uh, did it was that unexpected? Did you, did you come here thinking they might throw the football around? Sort of nothing to lose. No. Look, you know, part of our our thinking for this game was that we had to be really strong on fifth and last play. We knew they'd have a crack at us, whether it was with the kick or throwing the ball around. And um, yeah, we just we just weren't good enough. Certainly weren't. Here's what it means for the ladder at the moment. The Broncos are there in eighth position, hanging on by a thread because uh, the Newcastle Knights have made uh, a closer lunge at that eighth position with that win last night. Now, the Parramatta Eels, yes, they don't have a great points differential at the moment, but they will also take a step closer if they are to have a victory, as will the Raiders, who take on the Dragons. The records continue to fall at Newcastle, with Adam McDougall topping the club's all-time try scorers list, while rugby union-bound winger Cooper Boona equaled the club mark of four tries in a match. It's coming, Cooper Boona! While he stopped short of blaming the loss on the referees, Broncos coach Ivan Henjak remained confused over being denied a penalty try early in the match. Ask, you, you, you can ask Robert Finch that. Adam Thompson for Sports Tonight. As part of the Close the Gap round, the welcoming party for the Broncos was threatening. But rugby-bound Cooper Vuna gave them the biggest scare. The Knights winger crossed four times, and without Darren Lockyer, Brisbane's finals hopes continue to slow. Score! I think the easy thing to do is to blame that Darren's not there. The reality is he's not, and we've got to get on with it. Clinton Fletcher, Nine News. Good morning, Sunday footy show time once again. Thanks for your company as this intriguing battle for the top eight in the NRL Premiership continues. Uh, we've had the top 12 teams play amongst each other this weekend, so six very important games and three significant results still to come, including our big one out at Parramatta Stadium this afternoon where the Eels will take on the West Tigers. I'd like to take this opportunity to also thank our wonderful sponsors of the, uh, the program, Brute. We caught up with the guys for lunch during the week. Uh, I'd like to apologise for the amount that Brad Fittler and Andrew Johns ate. Uh, and speaking of the troublesome twosome, they are with me on the panel this morning. Brad Fittler, Andrew Johns, and we've got the Mad Dog himself who's joined us. And at 35 years of age, in his 16th season in the top grade, still playing some great football. Although, he, obviously, they did catch up with you on Friday night. But, um, Dugs, can you confirm that we've actually found out on Friday night the, the reason for your longevity or, or how you've, you've been able to maintain it? Can you tell us what is happening here? 
Um, yeah, that's um, a GoFit uh, vibration machine, which is a company that uh, my wife and myself own. With, ring uh, that bell. Yeah, <laughs> ring the bell. Um, what what does it do? Oh, well, it's um, something that's used by a lot of the sporting teams throughout the world. Manchester United, Arsenal, um, South Sydney have got one, Collingwood. And you all still that. haven't told me what it does. Um, what it does increases blood flow. Um, it warms you up before the game, so it's a lazy man's warm-up. Hey, can I go on to those? Uh, uh, it's just basically used, you know, to increase blood flow, help recovery, warm you up before the game, and um, you know, it helps you lose weight and yeah. tone muscle. Okay, and all I used to use a tracksuit, and if, you, know, you do that with five. But no, congratulations on your form, yeah. and you're in the <laughs> negotiations for, for next season. Yeah, it's going. It's um, I've decided to play on again next year, and um, from all reports from my manager, he's spoken to the CEO um, the other day at Newcastle. So, fingers crossed, I can hopefully get a deal worked out there. All right, you're looking sharp. Now, one side who hope that some results go their way to maybe give themselves a chance are the Newcastle Knights and uh, another great performance for them up at Energy Australia Stadium where they haven't been, well they were good early in the year, I think they've now won five in a row up in front of their home fans and, and Dukes take us through this one, uh, a couple of dummies cost you early in the game but gee you hit back and hit back strong. Yeah no it was a good win for us and um, we haven't had a Friday night game for a long time so the boys are really pumped up for a big game and uh, we uh, really want to put in a good performance at home for our supporters and you know, obviously the, you know, the top eight's probably out of our reach at the moment but um, we're just playing to enjoy our footy. Well you said you're enjoying your football, it seems like everybody's up and you've got a smile on their face, there's great spirit in, in the place at the moment. Yeah look, I, I suppose um, you know now that we're out of the eight the pressure of ours off us a little bit and we're just trying to enjoy our footy and uh, you know if the results go away we can still make the eight but at the end of the day we just want to go out there and uh, make our supporters proud of our performance. One thing that, that coaches hate to see is a concession of a try on the fifth tackle. It was four the other night. In a row I think you'll find and, and speaking of four, Cooper Verner there getting one, uh, got four on the night to go alongside Andrew Johns, Darren Albert and Dukes. yourself, Dukes, for yeah, four tries in a game. And congratulations Dukes, um, the try that we, score, we saw you score earlier takes you alongside Chimana Tahu for the most of the club and um, it's a wonderful achievement. Yeah, no, it's, it's good um, to equal the record but uh, you guys have probably got more records than I have and you don't play the game for that but it's always nice to um, get recognised for something on, like Dukes. that. I had him. I, I thought I was going to score him as well. You're looking to break <laughs> that record, Dukes. Yeah. And what about your, your, your man outside you, your combination with Arku? He'd be making you feel younger, wouldn't he? Oh, I love playing Boku. Even on the field, we have a bit of a chuckle and a laugh at times. And, uh, you know, he's a great player. And, um, you know, he's obviously making me keen to go around next year. He's in the ear every weekend. He wants me to play again well, next will year. Will you go around next year? Yeah, I'm definitely going to play next year. Well, I hope so with the Knights. I've spoken to um, the manager, spoken to a couple of other clubs, but my priority is to stay with well, Newcastle. You've got to stay in Newcastle. What about this kick, Joey? Well, that's just sensational. That, that was a, probably the special moment of the night. Look, yeah. the way <laughs> Cooper Verner celebrated, he realised that. Just phenomenal kick by Jared Mullen. The thing people would know is how hard would he have to hit that to get that sort of movement in the air? Well, he had to, he had to strike it as hard as he could. Yeah. The control is just Well, the, the target area phenomenal. was was so... If it's a little bit shorter, an inch shorter, it lands in the hands of the player, of the, the opposition player. If it goes too long, it's over the sideline. To yeah. actually get there, the precision was just remarkable. And, and, and on Jared Mullen, I, I think he's he's been fabulous the yeah. last month playing wounded the other night he, he's come back from broken ribs and they're not what? not fully healed what about that um, athlete yeah. yeah that was unbelievable please come back well, well what, <laughs> yeah, about, exactly. what about Brisbane they're, they are they look exposed now they're they're on 26 points on their own they've got Great a couple ball. of clubs a couple of teams yeah. chomping at their at their heels one of them is Parramatta who can join them if they are successful today Darren Lockyer will, you know, I guess he he'll play. feel some pressure to come back against the Warriors next week. Well, it's the last, you know, if they lose, then they're under enormous pressure to win the last game, and then their four and against comes into play. I think he has to play, and he has to play good. We talk about his ribs, they're, they will be painful, and to go over against New Zealand, who also have to win, he's going to have to take the line on and be as good as he can be. Daryl Halligan told me yesterday in New Zealand, it's, I think it's already a sellout, the game between Brisbane and A blackout. And should be. A blackout. Yeah. That's, well, that's what I had in the semi finals against the Roosters. The best atmosphere. I've seen in a game of football. It yeah, was unbelievable. The drums going along. Oh. Drum. Now, just something we picked up. We've talked a, a bit about Aquila Uate this morning and what a special talent he is. He's still learning the game, obviously. Uh, he's got to realise that at half time, you've got to, you've got to chase like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there he is uh, on this side wing. Uh, he's fixing his socks. He's about to have a look up in the stand. I don't know if someone yelled out to him. He's on food time. But, but obviously, Dukes, oh, yeah. uh, you didn't have a word to him here, so he comes through with me. <laughs> Tell us, about, tell us a bit about Aku. 
Oh, What's he like him? Mate, oh, just, uh, he's just a hilarious guy. He's um, very quiet and um, unassuming, but you know, now that he's starting to score some tries, he's getting a fair bit of confidence and he's got a bit of a strut about him. And uh, He's always got a smile on his face. He's just a great bloke to have around the club. So um, you know, it's a pleasure to play with him. And um, you know, as I said earlier, he just um, he, he brings a smile to everyone's face. Well, they're a pleasure to watch at the moment, Newcastle Knights. What a game they've got against the Dragons up there. It's old boys night. I don't mm. think they've ever lost on, on that particular celebration. Uh, so a tough road trip for the Dragons next week, and there'll be a big crowd again, as it should be, at Energy Australia Stadium. Um, and we want to thank you, Adam, for coming in this morning. Congratulations on, on uh, your good form, Newcastle's thanks, good mate. form, and all the best for maybe some results going your way if you can do the right thing over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, no, definitely. We've got to win games, and that's all that matters. That's it. Now, there are two tries. We'll go to Friday night now, Newcastle versus Brisbane. There are two tries coming up to half time that, uh, in commentary, I said was uh, the act of some sort of circus freaks. Have you seen the likes of this back to back? You may have seen one like it, but to get back to back within a few minutes, oh, sure. this was extraordinary. This is kind of watch me pour robot out of my hat stuff, isn't it? You know, Rocky and Bullwinkle, it's just kind of goes from one side to another, a little chip here and goes back and it's just unbelievable it's yeah great i love their jerseys by the way can yeah. i say that yeah you can say that yeah. sure yeah. love them jerseys well, you've said it and, and that Vuna's the first one this is the more incredible of the two because it starts on the left it's kicked over to right and gus you always say you've got to be beware of the second kick but, yeah. but it's it's not often that the second kick is so long after the first but again you watch uh, Mad Dog here, McDougal. He, he's a bloke who wants to ball more. He wants to ball more. He'll, he attack he'll attack it. Attack. Oh, that kick across the field. I haven't seen that. <laughs> That's great. Isaac de Goyce. Big Richie Fayoso, good ball over the top, and in the corner you go. The crowd is going berserk. So you can say there's a little bit of luck in those tries, but in the second half, Jared Mullen produces a kick that even, you know, the kids down at Bateman Bay Tigers, under sevens, will be trying to replicate. How good oh. is this? Kick of the year. How good's this? It's super stuff, isn't it? Kick of the year, yeah. And he meant it. Yeah, and he meant it. It wasn't as if it, it came off the it. side of the boot on purpose. The this weight, way, not just... the weight on the kick, the angle, the placement, everything perfect. And you do it in the pressure of a game. I remember years ago, I was coaching Origin, and we were training at Coogee Oval. And at the back end of our session, Andrew Johns called out to Tamana Tahu and did this banana kick that went across field. And Tamana woke up from his slumber and raced through and caught it one-handed and put it down in the corner and we all laughed and it was one of those beautiful big mm. banana kicks. And Roy Masters, who was a journalist at the time, came over to me and he said, he said, that's a fluke, isn't it? I said, yeah, absolute fluke. I said, but he flukes it nine times every <laughs> time. <laughs> and he did. Yes. It, whenever he wanted to do it, he could do it. The pair of them could just that was they had that sink, you know. And hasn't the kicking come along because, Gus, I'm, we're speaking to you as a man who in a grand final, under pressure, well, sorry we don't have the vision for you, uh, everyone watching, but you actually produced a oh. kick over your head yes. in a grand final. Yes. Yes. Like, you must have practised that. Uh, how many times? Like, well, well never. I'll tell you never. the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. The, I'll tell you the truth leading up to that. Yes. If you remember back in those oh, days, we'll Jack, to get the vision next Jack, Jack Gibson used to have the place the ball from the tap kick and and have Mick Cunningham kick it across. Well, maybe he used to have that. Mm, Sterlow would hold the ball and kick it across. Mm. It got the day before grand final, and our coach Warren Ryan says, "I've got to come up with a trick tap kick to match Jack Gibson." I said, "Like what?" He said, "Can you kick a ball over the back of your head?" I said. Yeah, why? He said, we'll give it to you off tag. You just kick it out of the back ears. I've got to have something to match Jack. And that's why we did it. Mm. Mm. And yeah. it produced a try. But we had we didn't practice it. There you go. And he decided the day before you the game. You've got to give it the next the one. We have to, yeah. I, yes. don't, I don't mind that. I mean, we're not, we're not seeing a great deal of innovation, it appears, from any coaches in the National Rugby League at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it was good to see that mm. bit of skillful play. We see individual skill from the mm. players. We don't seem to see a lot of great individual great innovation from that but Let's, it was good so to see manly on monday night touch? place kicks for touch is manly that what you monday like night few short kickoffs worked a trick oh yeah love short kickoffs Gotta see love more short kick uh, another another tick next to newcastle friday night for all the things they would have prepared and planned to do and one is to stop israel falau and this is a rare occurrence never happened falau catches a bomb clean and is still stopped short of the line. Uh, was that Gidley they Bates? surrounded him. They haven't taken out any runners coming through. falau has got the challenge, and there's three players there. I thought that was good stuff. Who was mm. the player in the yellow boots who sa actually saved him from school? Was it Gidley or Mad Dog McDougall? Because wh whoever it was showed unbelievable strength. Uh, and Israel, yeah, he's been a little bit quiet lately since he signed mm. with the other coach. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I think if you keep defending like that, you'll concede more tries than you save uh, mm. with yeah. Israel. To keep allowing him to get the ball of it. Don't let him have the, yeah. have the catch of it. True, yeah. that's a good point. It's a shame Cooper Verna, probably best form of his life. He's off to the Melbourne Rebels, so he's yeah. lost to the National Rugby League. So. Isn't yeah. Junior Seawags going there? 
No, no, not Junior South. Oh. Luke Rooney's actually going. Luke Rooney and Cooper Vuna will be the wings of the okay. Rebels. Uh, Cooper next Vuna's year. going to rugby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He signed with Melbourne. I signed a long, long time uh, ago. Yeah, early good, on in the season. Two months ago, yeah. signed with the Melbourne yeah. Rebels. Um, yeah, they're sorry to break the news to you, Gus. There we go. Uh, the, the election is. Is it one of them salary The election's gone to Golden Point and Cooper Vuna's gone to the Melbourne Rebels. Okay. Okay. Well, it can't be a salary cap because they've signed four players oh, since they lost. I just want to get to Parramatta this afternoon. <laughs> Friday night football. And look, I put my hand up. I plead ignor ignorance here. Uh, a lot of clubs have these. Yeah. The vibrating machines and it's doing good things. And Adam McDougall, his missus, actually uh, markets them. And he's having great success, I think, through one of the fitness uh, joints. So well household. done to the Mad Dog. And uh, you're featured in the coverage on Friday night big time. And Gus, you've got one. I make milkshakes with it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay. you, you, you stand on with a bit of milk and... Yeah. Uh, what a show. Put a, of, put a bit of topping in. Put the fizz in your shampoo. <laughs> there we go. We say every week it'll be a miracle for back next week, but somehow we just keep coming back. So see you then. Big game delay. Get there. Bye-bye. One more for Just give me one for baby. One more for road. Okay, cue the music. Here we go. Stuff you may have missed this week. And we hope that we get off to a better start than uh, Kula Yuati did after half time last week. Watch this. He's the leading try scorer in the National Rugby League. Did you miss this stuff? Bottom of screen, bottom left of screen. Referee will blow his whistle. Kickoff will take place. And uh, Kula Yuati, he is off with the fairies. Here's the kickoff. There we go. Yeah, that way, man. But anyway, we can report that Adam McDougall, he missed the entire game while he was on his vibration machine. At least that explains in recent weeks what all those crinkles are at the back of his head. Wonderful bit of gear. Good on your Mad Dog. Only the Mad Dog could use that. Stuff you may have missed. Now, another player doing some good things off the field in rugby league is Newcastle's Ben Cross. You would have noticed during the year he's been wearing one blue boot, one pink boot, and that is raising money and awareness uh, for breast cancer and also for the Prostate Cancer Foundation. But for Ben Cross, he's also closing in on a bit of an unwanted record in rugby league, and that is most games without a try. Now, we've got some stats that uh, the guru David Middleton and myself have put together. This is the record of players and, and try drought well, streaks, if you like. Jason Lowry went 138 games before he got his first try. Martin Lang went through a period there of 108 games without a try. Mark Brockenshire is actually the record holder the only player we have found in the history of the game that played more than 100 games and never scored a try. Now, Ben Cross is only 10 tries behind him. So come on, Ben, you can do it. Don't score a try this weekend. And it's one of the reasons that he signed on for another year in the National Rugby League. Here's Ben Cross. Definitely. It's not, uh, not through lack of trying. I've definitely uh, been there hunting around for a try for all 93 games. But, um, yeah, it would be unfinished business for us sort of head over to the UK with a try. But... Um, Oh, I hold pretty good solace. There's Jason Larry. I think he played about 120 games. <laughs> That's and, true. and myself. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty embarrassing, but I'll, I'll get there one day. Yeah, Ben has told us that he's got a very special post-try celebration to show, but he's never had to do it. So uh, we'll wait and see if that happens. <laughs> maybe two more games this year. Maybe another if they make the finals and then a full season next year. One of four tries to Cooper Vuna last week, and the Knights face the Dragons at home tonight. The proposition here is that the Dragons can wrap up the minor premiership if they happen to secure this game, and the Newcastle Knights stay alive in the finals race with one round to go should they happen to secure a victory. And Junior, I guess the key to this game is yes, the Knights are playing very good football, but this is the old boys game. Now, w for many people that might know what that's about, I, I guess you can uh, fill them in a little bit more, but it's, it's uh, a, a touch of nostalgia that they always fire up for. Yeah, it's just the uh, the old players, the ex-players come along to the game and there's a, there's a bit of nostalgia about the history of the Knights, although it only goes back to 1988. They've had some very successful teams and some, some uh, great players in that short period of time. So the players will definitely lift. They're playing at home. They've won three of their last four matches. Uh, and although it's a tough contest against the Dragons, it is very winnable for them because when you consider the fact that last week against the Broncos, you know, they really just blasted the Broncos off the paddock. 44 points to 18 was the final scoreline and they played well right across the paddock. And for me, the Knights, 
in 2010 have been the biggest overachievers of, of the, the, the competition, regardless of what happens. Mm. You know, at the start of the year, they lost Houston and Wicks before the season started with um, with the, the legal case that's going on with, with regards to the drugs business. There's um, Steve Simpson's been out for a fair bit of the, bit of the year uh, with injury. He's subsequently retired. There's Corey Patterson, uh, Lalia, a whole lot of other guys around injured at the moment, yet still they've, they've stepped up. So for me, they've overachieved. I don't think they want to just put the queue in the rack just yet. They'll come out and, and give their very best for the last couple of games. But even if they don't make the eight, I still think it's a credible effort for the Knights in 2010. And the fact that uh, Adam McDougal and Akuyu Arte are still chasing a try-scoring records this year, I'm sure they'll be playing out of their skin. But Wiz, uh, what are you thinking here? Do you think it'll be oh, a close one? It's going to be 13 plus. Like no, 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 no. I'm not going to get 13 plus. I'm going to 1 to 12. I like the 375. But if you want to have a spare 50, just chuck it on the 13 plus for the Knights because Gordon Tallis told me to say that. And as we have a look at first try scorers as well, a reminder that uh, we're really keeping our eye on the mad dog, Adam McDougall, and also Akuyu Arte. Both of, of these uh, players for the Newcastle Knights are going for try scoring records tonight. Adam McDougall looking to break Tamata Tahu's uh, club record and also Akuyu Arte to become the most prolific try scorer in a season for the Newcastle Knights. So bearing that in mind, who are we going for for first try scorer? I'm going for Walsing Matt Hilda. <laughs> That's I like that one. Walsing, Walsing Matt Hilda. Hilda. What about you, Wizza? Why do we work with this bloke? <laughs> you are T. You are T. Junior, Jason Nightingale. <laughs> I've got to go. I've got to go. The Mad Dog, Adam McDougall, for me. Uh, it could be a, a special night up there. Did he take the vibration machine there? Did he take the vibration? No, it's there. It's the there. The, oh, is it, it's the a vibrate home game, home It's game. a go fit machine, apparently. Go fit. Yeah, go fit. You I reckon that's fit. what we should have on the show to warm up. It was very cold here tonight, but also uh, we, we must make special mention to, uh, to Steve Simpson. He retired yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago. He unfortunately uh, is injured and won't play out the season. It is old boys game tonight and uh, they will fire up for him as well. He's been such an inspiration for this side over many seasons. Yeah, look, uh, reading articles today about Andrew John saying that it's not a myth about this, that they really want to go out there and show that the trailblazers, all the Knights old boys that you know, uh, that there is a lot of pride in this jumper. And uh, Steve Simpson, I happen to be his roomie. I'm in mean, a couple of test matches. And he's just a fair dinkum knockabout bloke. And, uh, you know, I suppose that he'd love to be out there. But every Newcastle player gets there. And, uh, you know, they're going to be hard to beat. But I just think that if the Dragons are the Premiership favourites, I think they should win tonight. Looking forward to this one. A reminder, press that red button on your remote, remote if you want to see the Canberra Raiders taking on the North Queensland Cowboys. But for now, stay right with us because we're going to take you to Newcastle for the Knights taking on the Dragons on Super Saturday. <laughs> on Fox Sports. Super Saturday continues from a full house at Energy Australia Stadium as the Newcastle Knights look to keep their season alive against the St George Illawarra Dragons who are hoping to bounce back from that embarrassing loss to the Canberra Raiders in Canberra last weekend to take one giant step towards the minor premiership in 2010. It is old boys day in Newcastle. Can they fire up the local team? We'll find out shortly as they line up to welcome the current Newcastle Knights heroes onto Energy Australia Stadium as they say farewell to one of their best ever in Steve Simpson. A smile across the face of Wayne Bennett as the Dragons survive a massive scare in Newcastle to win and get two competition points. They've beaten the Newcastle Knights by 26 points to 18. They led by 16 points to nil at half time, by 22 points to nil before the Knights got to within four with plenty of time remaining and almost, almost caused a massive, massive upset. They had some wonderful performers on both sides. The Knights during their comeback, Mullen, we just saw Dean Young had a great performance defensively. Matt Cooper outstanding on the left. 
Well, one man that uh, has now has the record outright for the most tries ever for the Newcastle Knights is Adam McDougall. And he could have added tonight with another one. They went well. He's downstairs with Stuart Raper. Well, Dukes, <laughs> a great second half performance, but uh, not just good enough. What was said at half time? Oh, look, mate. Uh, footy's one of them games, mate. It goes in ebbs and flows. As long as you stick out, uh, we haven't got the footy and defend well, you're always a chance. But uh, we let ourselves down in the first 40 minutes of our defence and our attitude. And, uh, we played some good footy in the second half, a little bit too late though. And you break the record tonight, uh, try scoring record, uh, congratulations on that. Yeah, we'll be honest with you, it's probably not the night you want to break it when you get beat, but uh, I'll take it, so it's a good achievement and um, something I'll uh, remember until someone else like a coup breaks it. At the beginning of the year you were probably tipped as uh, getting the wooden spoon. I think you've, you've really achieved uh, pretty pretty some good, pretty, pretty good things this year. Oh look, you know, you don't really worry about what the critics say. Uh, if you start to listen to them, you'll be in the stands with them. So, uh, you know, we don't worry about too much what other people say. We just uh, play tough footy and uh, try and do it for our fans up here. And I think we've played pretty good this year. Well, well done, mate. And congratulations getting in the deal. I sell Karen Bar Dream Team as well last week. Yeah, it's probably the highlight of my career. Beats winning grand finals and playing for Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Doug. At half time, it was 16 points to nil to the St George Illawarra Dragons. At full time, it was 26 points to 18 in a terrific game on Super Saturday, once again living up to its name. And St George Illawarra ending the season of the Newcastle Knights, and they'll be looking to celebrate the minor premiership next week on Sunday night against South Sydney at Cogra. And Super Saturday is not over yet because it is a big one for Gary Belcher and the Canberra Raiders fans. But tomorrow, the Toyota Cup starts at 11.30. We're going to big one at Leichhardt. It's a sellout there, Gary, as the Tigers take on the Storm. The Tigers looking for a top two finish with the loss of the Titans. But still to come on Super Saturday, your Raiders taking on the Cowboys. Can they get in the top eight by beating the Cowboys? We'll find, up very, find out very shortly on Fox Sports 2 H and Fox Sports 2. It's been a wonderful night here in Newcastle, but not if you're a Knights fan, but they were brave in the end as they have all season. On behalf of Gary Belcher, Stuart Raper and the crew, I'm Mark Braybrook. It's goodbye from Newcastle, Canberra next. For the second season in a row, St George Illawarra are the minor premiers and their first half was superb last night because Newcastle threw plenty at them. They were good enough to win the game and here's what was said in the sheds after last night. A great night in the making. The old boys are full house, but not the result you wanted. Yeah, absolutely. Probably a little bit slow of the blocks in the first half. A bit flat, considering the way we've been playing the last few weeks. It's been yeah, a bit disappointing. Second half was good, but um, yeah, Saints showed plenty of championship qualities. Magic 83, the leading try scorer in Newcastle Knights history. Congratulations. Yeah, no, it was good to do it at home in front of such a big crowd. And, uh, you know, I was hoping that sort of gave us a bit of momentum to win the game, but um, unfortunately we just fell short. Steve Simpson, an emotional night for you? Yeah, it has been. It's um, something, I suppose, when I made the decision a few weeks ago now, it's something uh, I've more been looking forward to rather than being uh, too emotional about. I've, it's a great bunch of people up here involved in the club and, and the players have been so so great to me over the years and had some good times with them. And and the fans, of course, up here, are obviously, I think, in my opinion, the best in the league. I might be biased, but... Um, they're a great bunch of people. They really support their team and get right behind us. So um, it's been a great night. I think players like Steve Simpson have made Newcastle very easy to support for those fans up there. Uh, really, really good player and, and one of the great guys off the field as well. 216 first grade games for Newcastle, 13 origins and seven test matches. And he'll be missed. Unfortunately, injury has, has pretty much forced him out. There was some talk that he might go back and play in the local league in the Newcastle comp. That's not the case. But yeah, I think a lot of local players bring a sigh of relief. I think you talk about Steve Simpson. I haven't played with a player who's, who runs harder or runs at a gap better than any back rower I've played with. Oh, and right. I, these two players will test it. Mm -hmm. you know, testimony, he, how hard he is to tackle. <laughs> I had to tackle him. <laughs> yeah, so he used to so run around all the time. To, well, before we played, Freddie used to say to uh, Simo, go home and shine those elbows and knees up. I'll get you one on one Freddie this <laughs> I week. I used to wear my little blue pads on my shoulders. I don't have cork <laughs> biceps or... Well, we do no. wish Steve uh, all the best in whatever he pursues after uh, what's been a wonderful career and he should be very proud of himself. Uh, great performance for Newcastle over a number of years. Remain patient in this game as Peter oh, Wallace, Wallace has been annihilated. Fua. Mark Tafua has absolutely.
cleaned up, he's diced him, he's done everything to Peter Wallace. Now, the play the ball area, you know that it's... Uh, well, let's up, up on the high horse again today because I've got real problems with it. Now, last night, there's a, a crucial penalty here given. Um, Newcastle, Junior South, the, the ball carrier. So much is favoured the ball carrier at the moment. They don't have to hang on to the ball. They don't have to get to their feet to play the ball. They don't have to get to the feet where they were tackled to play the ball and this sort of garbage goes on. Now, because Junior South has crept ahead two and three metres there, Dragons are then caught offside and a penalty goes to the attacking side 10 metres out. Can we please clean this area up in the off-season? It can't be that hard, can it? But to throw it back on the ball carrier to get a little bit of attention to detail. Well, this is a little bit of a turnaround, that penalty, because the excuse has always been for moving off the mark. Well, that narrows the 10 metres, so that mm. gives an advantage to the defensive side. So if the attacking side wants to move forward, really he's doing his harm. He's doing more harm for his side than mm. not. But that's a bit of a, a, bit of a turnaround, that I one. Is there, is there a chance we could run the country? Yeah, like, uh, besides running the game of rugby league, the independent commission on the side, we could be the balance of power? Well, oh, I think they really? should come to us. Yes. They should come to us for advice. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I'd like to pass yeah. a motion. <laughs> that's probably ruled us out. That's probably ruled us out if that's the platform we're going to stand on. Um, earlier in the year, we highlighted a face massage just saying how much we enjoyed it. The Tigers game against the Gold Coast and they gave Scotty Prince a little face massage, the old Tigers boys, and we thought that was wonderful rugby league. Last time we had a little reverse face massage, Mick Wayman. I like these little, these are, these are subtleties of the game. Just give it. Like, he doesn't have to do that. He's laughing at But I like that. Yeah. You know, he's getting to beat. Why not leave yourself off the, off the skull of an opponent? I like that. Oh, well, it's a bit of UFC. UFC's on this afternoon, so why not? It's good to watch. Now, a couple of good charge downs last <laughs> night. For those who don't have pay TV, watch these two. The first one is off Darius Boyd. Oh, I mean, oh. how far does that go? A 30-metre ricochet. The next one, though, <laughs> it's balls of a different kind that go <laughs> a long way, MG. You want to talk us through the second one after Darius Boyd's effort? Con Mika is the man yeah. that's going to be in a bit of trouble. Well, Con Mika had a really, really deep voice until this happened. Um... And if you watch from the head-on, you'll see why he's got a squeaky voice this morning. Um, he used to talk... Look, he was, now he talk... Oh! Can I have my balls back? Um, that's, that's not real good, is it? He'll... Poor bugger. Yeah, poor bugger. That's a bit like uh, Rick Disnick from that... Uh, when he hit the, the pommel horse and he, yeah. he broke his larynx and his everything else. He broke everything there. Mm. His cags. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think there's much chance of the four of us... No. Running the country now, MG. You, you are you are good at passing a motion. And now <laughs> if oh, you've introduced the word Kags to the that. show. First time Kags has been used <laughs> in, in, in our lofty and illustrious history in this program. Kags gets mentioned today. So Kags, I toast Kags. There's not much doubt. There's not much doubt at all. Who is the Bob Catter of the uh, Sunday Rose panel? Is there? Oh. Where's the cowboy hat? <laughs> you got, you got uh, all right. Okay. You got no idea. No. How often? he used to Cags. okay well, we've been I can told... tell stories yes. now <laughs> well look we've been told that we, we have to go off air now right now is it Gus we've got to go off air I'm sorry last night the Dragons Ben Cray turned solo man against Newcastle Cray running straight and hard he runs straight through four defenders reaches out and scores one of the best individual tries this season down 22 nil the Knights launched a comeback but with less than four to go, the speed of Darius Boyd and Jamie Soward secured a 26-18 win. Soward arrives! Soward will score! The night season is over, while for the Dragons, it's back-to-back -back minor premierships. St George Illawarra win the game! Now, stuff. Now, you've heard about people getting one-on-one -on -one tackles and all the rest. Well, Con Micker for Newcastle, he copped one in the tackle. And I mean in the tackle. Have a look at this. Jamie Soward's kick. Boy, oh boy, this would bring tears to a glass eye. That is sensational stuff. Con Mika. And, uh, yeah. yeah that's, uh, Con Mika. Uh, they actually found his testicles down the northern end of the ground. But anyway, we have that. Join us now on the, Sunday, on the Thursday night footy show. I'm sorry, it's normally the Sunday, but it's Thursday <laughs> night now. It is. A man who at 50 years of age still playing his best football. We better not get our heads too close together. We look like a backside. Adam McDougall. <laughs> Now, probably the first time you've been asked this question in the last two or three weeks, but what are you doing next year and where are you playing? Um, are you playing? Yeah, I'm playing. Um, just going to wait until after the weekend's game to announce what's happening. But um, 
Yeah, just uh, looking forward to getting a good win this weekend against Melbourne. All right, let's work the percentages here. Newcastle next year, if it was a percentage, we talk what, 90, 95% you might be turning out? Oh, look, it's where I want to obviously finish my career. I've I got to... I asked for a percentage, so don't... Uh, oh, look, I'll just... Um... Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. I'll hopefully get a decision on um, next week oh. and we'll sit down and hopefully nut something out. Okay, very good. Now, uh, tough weekend. Do you go down to Melbourne, Avi Park? Got a sellout down there. Obviously looking to send some of their star players out. Uh, in the right fashion, uh, and you're outside the cup, right? Eight dollars twenty a night. No, Kurt Gidley. I know that hurts, but you, you're capable of an upset. We've seen that. Yeah, look, we uh, probably have struck Melbourne at the worst possible time. The grand finals are going to be on the weekend, and as the odds are pretty indicative, it's going to be a tough task. But uh, we probably should have beat them early in the year, and um, I'm pretty confident we come away with a good win. And Dukes, we've seen uh, Kurt Gidley move into the halves. There is that a permanent thing? Would you like to see it a permanent thing? Do you think it works better than when he was at fullback? Um, Look, at the end of the day, it's where he wants to play. He's, you know, our highest profile player. So if he wants to play fullback, he probably should have the option of playing there. But, um, you know, I reckon for rep football, I'd love to see him in the halves. I think we've got some great fullbacks and um, probably not as many good halfbacks. So it'd be great to see him in the halves. And the way you have played over the past probably two, two weeks, especially, does it kind of frustrate you a little bit that you didn't play like that most of the season? Yeah, look, it's uh, been a year of what ifs for us. It, I suppose if it's well documented. We had a, you know, a well documented bad start of the year and uh, lost a lot of key players. And um, unfortunately, we just missed out in the eight. But uh, there's always next year. You got the record. You yeah. go over the 83 record. Eighty-three tries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the record. Eighty-three tries for, for Newcastle. You broke to Manatahu. It took him three seasons to get eighty-two tries. It's taken you 15 to get 83. <laughs> Can you explain that to us? No, oh, look, at the end of the day, I've beaten some fairly good players. Ah, record, very good. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a centre too, and my job is to set up <laughs> tries. So, so um, you know, it's just a great record to have. And, um, you know, everyone says records uh, don't mean much, and they don't, but it's always good to break them. Yeah. Well, in all seriousness, congratulations. And, and you're really, really sharp this year. Now, we're wondering whether the sharpness that you've got this year is something to do with something we saw first when you took on Brisbane. I don't know if it does you any good, but you look like you're having a good time. What it, what, we've got one of these behind us here. Now, I know your wife and yourself sell these, so if you're asked for a job description, do you say that we sell vibrating devices? Is that basically your job description? Well, and yeah. what is it? Well, it's actually a, a vibration machine. and um, <laughs> Exactly. It's a big one. It's a big vibrator. And uh, <laughs> the whole idea of it is it just, um, it's, it's, it's to increase blood flow and um, tone muscle oh, and stuff like that. It's all so. sounding good. And then you have to really stand on it, so it does the work for you. But it makes you feel good too, doesn't no, it? it makes it? you like, feel great. You stand you, on it and you feel great. And I didn't good. think they were going to get you back on the paddock that night. <laughs> I just thought you were going to stay there. Well, I think we, we should give this a run. Yeah, okay, sure. now, it, it's League of Their Own time. And oh, the person who does the resident League of Their Own is, is Mario Fennick. Now, let's get Mario out. Yeah! Jump on, jump on, jump on. That's Adam McDougall. Why have I got the weird hey, outfit? No, stand up. We'll have a chat to you. How are you, mate? People don't like this stuff, you, mate. Mate, you're looking, you're looking trim, fit. You've been working out. There okay. Is a, there is a problem, go. though, that it does increase blood flow, so... <laughs> <laughs> we're in major smoking as well. It's safe. It's no, safe, don't it? People are loving this. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, what the hell? We're going to put you through, but you're going to do League of Their Own? You're going to do League of Their Own? Well, this thing? Yeah. Oh, this will do, No, you can do it. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right. Relax him. Oh, what do you got for us? What do you got for us? Okay, listen to the League of Their Own. It's all about kids playing rugby league for fitness and fun. We got three beauties entry A. Master Aiden Warner run right away by hell of this. He races away. They're not going to catch this kid. And he goes over in the corner. It's his thing. Emily Mooney. Now, watch this, Emily. I tell you what, who said girls can't play rugby league? <laughs> what about the movement of her? And she is quick, boy. And she goes over under the post. <laughs> now, have a look at this one. This is a beauty. Kick off. Watch this. Bounces back. He takes it. He's away. And they're not... I tell you, this is killing me, folks. And he scores in the corner. Oh, this is beautiful. NTA. NTA, B or C? Yeah. What, what did they say? What are you, B? You're... <laughs> this is killing me. Entry C, you're correct. C. Have a look at this. Regather. Oh, whatever, that's for a try. And he's away. Fantastic. 
and on oh, don't make it quicker, stay hey. Roll on deodorant, please. And this is what you've won. The weekly winner will receive a black Nintendo Wii with not one, not two, but three games, including NRL. Wii means fun for everyone. Plus, to get the best pictures, you'll need a Toshiba 42-inch LCD, valued at nearly $1,500. And the major prize winner will take home a new Nissan Navara, dual cab STX turbo diesel four-wheel drive, valued at over $50,000, with 140 kilowatts of class-leading power, a three-ton brake towing capacity, plus Bluetooth hands-free, dual-zone climate control, and six airbags. The new Navara Dual Cab STX is Australia's most powerful tradie. There you go. You said, oh, we get our own. Send you a 90 second DVD to we get their own competition. The, the NRL footy show, post office box 27, Willoughby, New South Wales, 2068. What about this? Outstanding. I'll tell you what. Dukes. 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 This is killing me, dude. Oh, mate, this works. That is the clearest I've ever heard him talk. How do you get one of these? Um, you can obviously go online. To, um, there's a website up there or ring 1800 Go Fit. We've got 40 stores throughout Australia. So, uh, can I have this one? I'll take this one. Yeah, you can have that one. And, um, you know, they start at $10 a week. So, uh, Go Fit, get yeah. out there and get fit. <laughs> All right. Well, mate, good luck next year. We know you'll be playing somewhere. Congratulations on what you've done. Thanks for coming Thanks, down sir. tonight. Yeah. Adam <laughs> well done, mate. Fatty, we've already got one on order for you. Looks right up your alley. <laughs> So he's got one of the best smiles in the game, Cooper Vuna. He's going to be missed by Newcastle. I, you know, I know people at the time when they said he was going off to the Melbourne Rebels, people said, ah, oh, well, big deal. But gee, he's still a good player, Absolutely. Cooper Vuna. You'd love to keep him in rugby league and the great smile. The new, Newcastle people have loved him. Well, the team at the centre of rugby league's greatest scandal has ended its season on a high. Stripped of all points for 2010, Melbourne went out with a bang, easily disposing of Newcastle today. A final farewell for Melbourne's departing players after a year the storm will happily forget. And it must be an emotional time for them. And the script couldn't have been written any better. Here's Greg Inglis, he's over the line! Eager to end their season on a high, the storm was showing glimpses of their best. Who's become a try scoring machine? Ryan Hinchcliffe races away. But Newcastle were also playing their final game for 2010 and started the second half perfectly. Now Taya on debut, he doesn't pass to the youngster, he doesn't have to. The Knights had all the momentum, it took some Slater magic to stop a 40-20. Slater does well and stays in the field to play. The that was the inspiration Melbourne needed. Another of their departing players took full advantage. Here is Kelly, here comes Hoffman, Ryan Hoffman. It started a magical run, next was Brett White's turn to end his storm stint on a high. Here they go. Bulldogs bound Aidan Tolman was next. This is unbelievable! But the man they'll miss the most had one last goodbye. Here's Inglis for the corner. He started it. He finishes it. Jonathan Williams for Sports Tonight. So it is Mad Monday for both teams tomorrow and both sides can't see 2011 soon enough. Winger of the Year. The nominees are... Fred Morris, Aquila Uate, Michael Gordon, Manu Vatave, and the winner is Aquila Uate from the Newcastle Knights. Oh, here's a short kick taken by Uate, and Aquila oh! goes through. Oh! Well, yeah, cross goes. Aku, you lit up the field this year. Honestly, you were fantastic to watch. Uh, 21 tries. You, you had a lot of fun. Yeah, mate. Um, I had a great year this year. Thanks to the coach for a great season um, and, and all my teammates from Newcastle. What about the good service from uh, your old mate Mad Dog inside? That's pretty good too. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the Mad Dog if you're watching at home. But, um, yeah, no, it's been, uh, it's been great. I've, been, I've, I've learned so much from the Mad Dog and... Um, 
you know. Now, what about rep footy? Let's talk about rep footy. You've played for Fiji in the World Cup and in the Four Nations last year, uh, in, in, the, in the Pacific Cup, sorry. Uh, but I, I've heard that you, you want to play State of Origin. Is that right? Yeah, mate. I'd, I'd love to um, play for the Blues. Um, you know, it's a great atmosphere and I'd love to get involved in it. So. Beautiful. You'd look great in a Blues job, but don't take any phone calls from Queenslanders. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Well done, Aku. Terrific season. I actually looked to my left and, and to, to watch Matthew Jones. I knew he was going for the field goal. And, uh, well, I thought he was going for the field goal. And, and as I've looked off, the ball was not there. There was nobody to be found. So I've looked back the other way, and, and Joey's already taken off down the, the blind side. I don't know how or why it sort of happened, but there was just a massive gap right where I was heading to. And I don't know, it was just kind of one of those things that you look back and, and it's probably the, the pinnacle of my career, even though it happened at such a young age.